I'm in the woods in uh, Barcelona. Ciao, welcome, bienvenidos. I'm in Barcelona and uh, I was walking into these woods and I decided I'm gonna complete the Ask Me Anything with all the questions that uh, are left over from the last episode when I was getting to Barcelona. As usual, the questions might be in Italian or in English or in Spanish. You, I will translate them in English, but you will find uh, subtitles in so many different languages. I started to subtitle my videos in, uh, in like a, maybe like 10, 10 languages. So uh, activate the subtitles and you sh should see it in your own language. Let's get into it and answer some questions. Danny28 Instagram, best and worst country to travel? We already answered this question in uh, the previous episode, so you have to go and watch those because we cannot answer all, always the same question, no? From TK, what were the toughest or, or most unexpected visa situation you had to deal with? It wasn't anything crazy so far. I think it will be a bit more complicated when I get to Central Asia to navigate through the visa situations. Uh, crossing the Americas, I only had to ask for the American visa. And then crossing Africa, I had to ask for the Ethiopian visa and the Sudanese visa. The Sudanese visa was uh, pretty straightforward. The Ethiopian visa was a bit tricky. And uh, yeah, I kind of lost it in the, in the Ethiopian embassy in, uh, in Kigali. And I, and I started to shout a little bit and I got very upset and then uh, they grant me the visa. And the American one is a bit tricky because you have to submit loads of uh, paperwork. You have to get an interview in an, um, in an uh, American embassy or a consulate. And um, it's, uh, it's usually fully booked for months and months. And you're always there online to try to see if someone gave up their spots and if something, uh, some place is free up uh, closer to, to the date. Next is uh, Luca from Italy. Mentre vai, quanto tempo dedichi al viaggio e quanto alle riprese? Per me le giornate sono state piuttosto piene. Tra cibo, acqua, pedalare, capire dove andare, dove dormire, il tempo scorre. Il tuo è un vero e proprio lavoro, direi. He basically asks how much of my time during a day is devoted to traveling and how much is dedicated to documenting the trip. So my videos are a little bit boring because I don't put that much time into documenting the trip, into, into recording um, videos and taking pictures. So usually I put the, the GoPro on my chest and I have the GoTo on my hat. And that's it. I, when I'm around every now and then I just turn on the, the GoPro if I like the place, if I think it's an interesting route, and uh, or if I wanna, or if I wanna talk. Sometimes, if I pitch my tent, I make a time lapse that you usually see in the videos. It's, it, I don't do it all the time, so yeah, it takes like 30 seconds. I put down the GoPro, and then I start to pitch my tent, and then uh, if I use the drone, it requires a little bit of. Um, of more time because you have to stop, you have to take out the, the controller, you have to open up the drone, you have to fly it, you have to control what you're doing and yeah, take some footage. So that requires a little bit of work. The problem is once you've done recording, you have to edit the photos, you have to edit the videos, you have to write caption for Instagram and Facebook and all these things uh, they take up a lot, a lot, a lot of time. So not so much when I'm on the road, but when you st I stop somewhere for the editing of the videos, the photos, the writing, it's a lot, a lot of time. Luca also asked another question. Grosso modo, in questi anni di viaggio puoi fare una stima su quanto tempo riesci a stare in giro senza un riposo vero? Intendo qualche giorno fermo con un letto, una doccia e una quantità di cibo adeguata per ricaricare le batterie. He's asking, based on my experience of so many years on the road, if I can quantify how much I can travel constantly before I need to chill in a place. It could be an hotel, a campsite or, um, 
or a host. So he's basically saying, how much can you travel before you need to sleep in a bed, take a shower and get some good food? There isn't a specific day number. It really depends on where you are, the conditions, the climate. And also like if you are in Alaska and there is nothing, you have to deal with it. And, or you're in Patagonia, for example, or you're in a desert. Until you cross the desert, there is nothing. If I look back at the last year, it was probably the longest I went. It was probably two weeks, if I don't mistaken. But it really depends where you're traveling. As I said, the weather conditions, the climate, and, and also the, the opportunities you have. Because as I said, if you are in Alaska, you have to deal with it, you know? There isn't nothing for a thousand of kilometers, you have to deal with it. You're crossing a desert, you have to deal with it. So either you're tired or you're dirty or you're wet, you just need to deal with it. Carl from Instagram, I saw you wearing a pinion t-shirt in a video with payment. Where's your pinion? Plans? Yeah, as I mentioned before in, a, in another video, I have the t-shirt, I don't have the, the pinion. <laughs> um, on a more serious note, Pinion agreed to sponsor me, but I have to find a, a frame for a Pinion. And uh, as I mentioned in, uh, in that video, I had a deal with a, with a Pinion bike manufacturer that agreed to give me a, a Pinion frame bike, but they had some internal issues in the company and um, and they were not in a position to, to give me the, the, the frame anymore. And uh, I thought I would leave the, the summer go by, go by. And now that I'm in Barcelona, I will try to contact some other companies and see if I can find a, um, a bike manufacturer that makes frames up to Pinion and that is willing to sponsor me. We'll see, finger crossed. From Instagram, Ricardo, Muruqui, when you can come and do a pedal here in Brazil? Yeah, when I went through South America, I skipped Brazil because uh, there were some other countries I wanted to, to see. When I was in uh, Puerto Aziz, in, uh, on the Amazon side of, uh, of Colombia, I had the opportunity to, to get to Puerto Leticia by boat and to follow the Amazon River and get to Manaus and from there start to cycle down Brazil, but I, I've chosen to go to Ecuador. I wanted to see Ecuador, Peru. So it will be next journey for sure. In this round the world, it's not gonna happen. But once I'm done with the, the round the world tour, maybe I'll do, I will move to Brazil for a year. It's a big country and maybe I will, uh, I will just stay there for a long time. Pizzetti Diego, quando potremo ritrovarti per le vie d'Italia? He's asking me when, uh, when will we be able to see you on the Italian roads? There might be a chance I will uh, cross Italy again on my way to Middle East. We will see in the next few months how the journey unfolds. Another question from Instagram, Levi Charhu. The camera fell, so you might see it a little different because it's not in the, in the same position as it was before. From Instagram, Levi Garcia Ju. Hola, David. Empezaste en el 2015, pero antes viajaba en bici. He's asking, you started your journey in 2015, but before, did you, did you do any bike traveling? No, this is my first uh, bike tour. It's a little long, but it is the first one I ever done. From Instagram, Cycling Beyond. What has been the toughest moment you faced in your bikepacking life? Well, I think the, the toughest part was to start when I was in Alaska because I had problems with grizzly bears. I had uh, hypothermia twice. I was wet and miserable all the time. It was very cold. Yeah, but that, that, the start was definitely the, the toughest one. From Instagram, The Real Outsider. Cosa pensi del cicloturismo in gravel? What do you think about uh, bike touring with a, with a gravel bike? You can bike travel with, uh, with any bike, really. Some are more fun, are more enjoyable than other bikes, but you can travel with a classic bike touring bike, with a road bike, with a gravel bike, 
with your grandma bike, anything will go. It's possible to do it with every possible bike, with a, with a tricycle, with a recumbent bike, with a, um, with a tall bike. You can do it with every kind of bike. In my opinion, if you have to buy a bike only specifically for bike traveling, I would buy a plus size bike because uh, the larger tires are much more fun. But you should travel with a, with a bike that you, you already have. That's the best bike to, to travel. Again, the real outsider, Vainai Campeggi, la guida definitiva per il campeggio in Libera. He's asking if I go to campsite and uh, the definitive guide to, to eye camping. I tend not to go to campsites unless it's a real emergency. The last campsite I was in, uh, it was in Morocco and I went there in Tata because uh, my friend was there. So I went there. So usually, otherwise I, I camp in nature in places like this. This is a park in, uh, in Barcelona and there's plenty of camping opportunity because I also came here at night and there was nobody. You can hide everywhere. It's, uh, it's okay. But it's, uh, there's nothing wrong to go to campsite other than for my budget, they are too expensive. But yeah, every now and then you can also enjoy the, the luxury of a campsite. So you can take a shower, you can wash your clothes, you can charge your batteries, your electronics, you can uh, yeah, do some maintenance to your bike or you can just chill a few days. And about the, the guide to wild camping, you just need to be a little street smart and there's no many rules you, you need to follow. My rules is that the place has to be dry, it has to be level, free of rocks. Nobody sees me there. I cannot be seen going into the campsite, uh, the camp spot, and I'm not visible from anyone. That's usually the, 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 best, uh, the best site you can choose, but sometimes you, you cannot fulfill all those um, those uh, criteria and you just uh, just have to deal with it. Alex Popov uh, thought, do you plan to return to a traditional job at some point similar to the multinational company you work for and what advice would you give to returning after long adventures? Um, this is my first grand adventure, this is my first bike touring trip so I cannot really give you advice on, uh, on uh, returning after a grand adventure we will have to wait a few years and see how I get on with it. I guess uh, if you've been on the road for a while, you should have uh, done some thinking about when it ends and have uh, something ready, maybe an activity you want to do or uh, a new career path, uh, some new activities you want to do. I guess if you have already something to do, then it's not going to be a, a problem. I heard that some people get a little depressed after uh, a grand adventure. Maybe writing a book could be a good idea. I, I have no idea, to be honest. And I really hope not to go back to work in an office after I finish this grand adventure. Alejandro Martin from YouTube. Me estoy equipando de a poco. Espero hacer algún viaje, aunque sea uno corto próximamente. Cuando empezaste a viajar, imagi imagina imaginabas que tu viaje dur duraría tantos años. Alejandro is preparing his gear to start bike traveling and he's asked me if I, when I started this journey, I knew I was going to be on the road for, uh, for so long. Nope, uh, the original project, which is called Alaska to Patagonia, was to cross the Americas from Alaska to Patagonia. So my initial plan was to be on the road for uh, 12, 15, 18 month maximum. That was my time frame, but then I decided to stay a little longer on the road. From YouTube, uh, Pierre Zamboni. Hai delle info su Casa del Ciclista, specie in Sud America, o dove posso reperire delle info? Pierre is asking about Casa del Ciclista. They are uh, open houses where you can stay and rest for basically as long as you want that are quite popular in, uh, in Latin America. They are basically warm shower hosts on steroids. There are people that they might host 15, 20 people at any given time. And people stay there one or two days. Some people stay there one or two weeks or one or two months. There weren't many 
especially when I cross the, the Americas. But now I hear that there are a lot. I would hope that if you can Google it, you find information about the Casa de Ciclista in every country. And maybe Google uh, Casa de Ciclista Peru, Casa de Ciclista Chile, Casa de Ciclista Colombia. The most famous one are the one, uh, the Casa de Ciclista in Trujillo, in Peru, which was the first one established in Latin America or in the world, I think. Another famous one is the one in Colombia, in, uh, outside Medellin. Another famous one is the one uh, outside uh, Quito in Ecuador. There are many ones and uh, yeah, but Google is your friend. And once you hit the road and you are in Latin America, you will probably join some WhatsApp group of bike, tourer, bike touring in, uh, in South America and uh, you will see information that people exchange and uh, it's, a, it's a word of mouth, you know. And lastly, we have some questions from France on Blandin. There are so many, I will, uh, I will answer some of them, Blandin. The craziest thing you did was definitely to start uh, bike touring and crossing Alaska. Most beautiful landscapes you saw. There are beautiful landscapes everywhere. I love deserts. Those are my, my, my favorite landscapes. But also I think the south of Bolivia, northern Chile, northern Argentina, they are definitely the best landscapes in the world. Most new and astonished meal you ate? Well, when I started this adventure, I hadn't had meat for a long time, basically 15 years. And uh, once I got to, to a host in, uh, in, in the US and uh, she prepared the liver. <coughs> and I used to eat liver when I was a kid. My mom would make it at least every couple of weeks. And I remember I was eating it and it was uh, a little different, but it was good. But once she gave me the liver, yeah, I forgot it. I forgot the taste, but it, it tastes really disgusting. And I told her like, look, I would love to eat it, but I can't. If I eat another piece, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> yeah, so that was uh, interesting. But I, in Africa, I had interesting meat. I had... Uh, Springbok, I had Nu, I had Impala, I had Zebra, I had uh, Camel, and uh, I kind of regret in Mexico not to try um, iguana meat. In Mexico they eat iguanas and uh, yeah, I refused and also it's not that I refuse but I always postpone it when I was in uh, in, in Ecuador and in Peru, they eat um, cuy. In, uh, in Italian, we call it uh, Indian pig. But I always said, OK, I will try it. I, I didn't want to eat it, but I wanted to taste it. But I always postpone it. OK, next week or, uh, you know, at the next chance, I'll do it. At the next chance, I'll do it. And I, I never done it. I should have done it at least to taste it, a, a little bite just to taste the meat. Best odor you smelled. I think when you cycle through, um, through some places in, uh, in the tropics and you smell like jasmine, like jasmine tea, but in the air, that's, that's a nice smell. Unforgettable places you slept in. I think it's uh, the camping in nature with my tent. And definitely when I camped in uh, the Salardo Uni in Bolivia, the big salt, this the largest salt flat in the world. That was, uh, that was something else. It was, uh, it was an amazing place. It feels like you're in a different planet. The stars were incredible and it was incredibly, incredibly cold. It was minus 10, mi minus 20 at night. It was very, very cold. And I'm actually surprised I didn't, I didn't, freeze to that. All right, I think uh, I'm done answering all the questions that you guys submitted in uh, Instagram, in YouTube, in Facebook, in private messages, in emails. It took me two episodes to answer all the questions, uh, but it is what it is. Now, I'm glad uh, you submitted the question and I'm glad I got to answer. It's always fun. And thank you for being part of the, this uh, community.
If you have any suggestion for me how to better document uh, this journey, how to do a better job to share uh, this grand adventure with you guys, let me know. And also thank you for all the donation I received. Thank you so much. I'll see you the next time. Ciao.